Halloween Horror Nights Orlando is the world's premier Halloween event, and Marvel is one of the most widely recognisable brands out there. But did you know that at one point in time, in the year 2002 to be precise, these two worlds collided? In this video, I'm going to explore the most ambitious crossover ever, Halloween Horror Nights and Marvel. Universal Orlando's second theme park, Islands of Adventure, opened in 1999. Upon opening, the park featured six islands, referring to the park's six different themed areas. One of these areas is Marvel Superhero Island. The island is home to four attractions, The Incredible Hulk, The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, Doctor Doom's Fearfall, and Storm Force Acceleration, which did not open until 2000. This area was originally intended to be DC Superhero Land, but Universal's deal with DC Comics ultimately fell through when Six Flags obtained the full license to DC Comics after being bought by Time Warner. This led Universal to negotiate instead with Marvel for the theme park rights to their characters, and both companies signed an agreement on March the 22nd, 1994. This contract stipulated that Universal could construct a complex of attractions, stores, and food venues heavily themed around the Marvel properties under the Marvel Universe banner at the second gate. Even now, Following the Walt Disney Company's acquisition of Marvel Entertainment in 2009, this agreement remains indefinitely in place. Unless Universal decides to close the Marvel Universe area, stop making payments for property usage, or Marvel opts out of the contract providing that they give a reasonable explanation that Universal is mishandling the usage of their property. Hence, Marvel Superhero Island has remained at Islands of Adventure for the park's entire lifespan, but their relationship with Universal hasn't been perfect. In fact, in 2002, a little problem did arise. Halloween Horror Nights began in 1991 at Universal Studios Florida. It came back every Halloween season and grew in size each year. In 2002, a big change occurred when it was decided that the event would be moved to Universal's newest park, Islands of Adventure. Due to the global situation in 2001, the entire US tourism industry suffered greatly. Halloween Horror Nights was no exception to this and saw a sharp decline in attendance. Both of Universal's parks suffered, but this was seen as particularly bad for Islands of Adventure, as the park had not met its opening expectations. In order to try to regain success, promotion for the following year's Halloween Horror Nights event started early, in April. Much of this promotion revolved around the event's new location. Islands of Adventure had been built to be a park that offered thrills, in the form of thrill rides, so it made perfect sense that this park should house Universal's most thrilling event, Halloween Horror Nights. This huge change was seen as a risky move for this already well-established event, but Universal nonetheless went ahead with this. They hoped that hosting Halloween Horror Nights at Islands of Adventure would bring a new wave of people to their latest park. During the event, Islands of Adventure's rides and attractions were open for guests complementing the Halloween offerings and showcasing what the park had to offer. For this new location, Halloween Horror Nights decided they needed a brand new icon. Their first idea, Cindy, was scrapped right before the event started due to a spike in child abduction cases in the USA. As Cindy was a young girl character, Universal decided that her presence just wouldn't be right. They worked hard to come up with a replacement, who could similarly provide an overarching story to immerse guests in that year's event. It was decided to make her newly imagined mortician father, the caretaker, the new icon. The new story went that the caretaker, Albert Kane, was a former surgeon, who was the current caretaker of a funeral home. 
he became interested in the workings of the human body and mind and went on to do obscene experiments on both the living and the dead. In retaliation, a mob burned down his home, but he fled the scene through tunnels below. Once escaped, he arrived at Islands of Adventure and infected the islands with his darkness and created his own servants. Some of these servants just so happened to be taken from Marvel Comics. I guess the caretaker was a pretty big Marvel fan, who'd have guessed it? Unlike Universal Studios, where most of the park is themed to look like rather easily disguisable city streets, Islands of Adventure is a fantasy-based park with high levels of theming. This meant Universal had to get creative in order to come up with scare zones that would mesh well within their respective islands. Port of Entry became Port of Evil. Toon Lagoon was home to the cartoonish Treaks and Foons. Jurassic Park became overrun not just by dinosaurs, but also cannibals and weird mutations in JP Extinction. The Lost Continent was home to lost souls in Island of Evil Souls. Zeus Landing was turned into Booville, an amusing play on Whoville, although the Who's were nowhere to be seen. Perhaps even more than any of the other islands, the scare zone located in Marvel Superhero Island drew directly from the original theme of the land, and even its original source material. Marvel Superhero Island was converted into a scare zone known as Island Under Siege, loosely based upon the 14-part comic story Maximum Carnage. This comic book featured Spider-Man and a host of other superheroes teaming up to face Venom's murderous offspring, Carnage, and his team of supervillains. In the comic, the heroes of course win, but for the scare zone, Universal opted for an alternative plot in which Spider-Man's archenemy, Carnage, killed most of the Marvel superheroes and took over. Carnage is a Marvel comic supervillain and functioned as a sub-icon due to the fact that he was one of the caretaker's minions. The storyline was that thanks to the power given to Carnage from the caretaker, he was able to lead the villains to victory over the superheroes. As a result of this, criminal gangs filled the streets and law and order had completely broken down, making way for total and utter chaos. The scare zone was originally going to be called Marvel City Under Siege and was going to mainly focus on carnage. There was also planned to be snipers on top of rooftops with super soakers and bungee scare actors. Both were removed in development, and the scare zone was renamed to just Island Under Siege, following the icon change. Carnage remained the prominent figure of the scare zone as the leader of all the villains, but other villains did roam and could be seen just as much as Carnage. The scare zone was full of signs of the villain's takeover, with crashed cars and allegedly Thor's hammer was in a crater on the ground, Captain America's bloodstained shield was hung up on Doom Tower, Spider-Man's webbing was everywhere, and Iron Man's helmet was there, stolen by a petty thief. Villains, including Crossbones, Mephisto, Craven the Hunter, and the Wrecking Crew, roamed the streets with carnage. There were also blood-covered policemen, failing to control the mess. There were huge stages constructed by the villains for themselves to stand on, which would shoot fire into the air. Scare actors on top of buildings would shoot flamethrowers whilst others would shoot water at the guests down below. There were allegedly also a few dead superheroes scattered throughout the streets to show the destruction. In the original concept for the scare zone, the rides were also taken over by the villains. The Green Goblin was planned to take over the Incredible Hulk coaster, claiming to have gotten rid of all the safety restraints, adding toxic waste into the lake, and causing a heavy fog to roll out onto the streets. Magneto was going to take over Stormforce Acceleration, enhancing it with strobes, heavy metal music, and his voice playing over the speakers. Doctor Doom's fearful was also going to have added screams of torture. Unfortunately, none of these theming changes happened, which is a shame 
because it would have been such a cool feature. In addition to this scare zone, there was also a house called Maximum Carnage, named after the comic series mentioned earlier. In this house, guests had to explore through Carnage's hideout, containing all his henchmen and the bloody remains of several superheroes. This house expanded upon the same story as was told in the scare zone. Back when Cindy was originally going to be the icon for the event in 2002, this house was planned to be located in the large extended queue for the Stormforce Acceleration ride. However, after the icon changed from Cindy to the caretaker, the house location also changed. Instead, Universal decided to build a permanent warehouse specifically to hold this haunted house. This was located behind Dr. Doom's Fearful. The warehouse would later be renamed the Carnage Warehouse, named after this haunted house, and would go on to be the location of two other houses. Other than the house location, the house concept mostly remained the same throughout the icon change. The entrance to this house was located to the right of the Incredible Hulk coaster entrance. In the queue, guests would see a large sign featuring the house logo before reaching the house facade, which was the entrance to Carnage's lair. Marvel villains, including Venom, Zorn, Scream, Toad, Electro, the Red School's henchmen, Vermin, and Mephisto appeared throughout the house, attempting to slaughter guests. In one room, there were multiple lasers pointing at guests, representing the villains using the guests as target practice. Then there was a scare actor behind a chain link fence holding a pneumatic device that would make a loud noise, especially when used up against a wall. Next, Halloween Horror Night's iconic revolving tunnel appeared, with holes inside of it, with lights shining through. Following this, there was a room with a waterfall behind a chain link fence and another with a scare actor jumping out from the inside of a cage. The house concluded with a nuclear reactor fit with flashing lights and loud sirens. There were also green lights and barrels labelled gamma radiation, a reference of course to the Incredible Hulk. There was a scare actor behind these, a scare actor with a gas mask and another one above. Guests exited into a junkyard with chain link fences and a toll booth. The Punisher, formerly an extremist vigilante, waging in a one-man war on criminals, was at the exit to the house, holding a flamethrower. According to the story, he became infected with Albert Kane's darkness and joined the caretaker and Carnage to help burn as many people alive as he could. Some say that Carnage also appeared at the end of the house upon a raised platform. Plus, both Captain America and Wolverine are said to have been suspended above guests in the house mounted between columns and covered in blood. Unfortunately, there is no confirmation of this. After the event concluded, Marvel complained to Universal about their presence at Halloween Horror Nights. They were not happy with being used in such a horror-oriented event, as they feared the effect this would have on their brand. They feared that if children came to the event and saw all their favourite superheroes depicted as dead, they would stop buying Marvel comics as they would think that these heroes were really dead. They were certainly within their rights to complain, as Universal only had the rights to use Marvel in attractions, stores and food venues, not haunted houses or scare zones, although it could be argued that this does fall under attractions. Therefore, since then, Universal has never had another entirely Marvel-themed house or scare zone again. But despite this controversy, the scare zone did become the scare zone of the year in 2002, making it the first scare zone to ever win this award, as this was the first year awards were given out. Even with Marvel's complaints and threats, this wasn't the complete end of Marvel's presence at Halloween Horror Nights. Halloween Horror Nights was held at Islands of Adventure again the following year, and a scare zone again appeared in Marvel Superhero Island. This scare zone was called Toxic City and did not draw at all from Marvel, though there was a slight nod to the Marvel Superhero Universe, 
Upon several cans of toxic waste, there was a label which said, Property of Oscorp, a nod to the fictional company from the Marvel comics, which is predominantly featured in Spider-Man. In 2004, Halloween Horror Nights was held in both Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios. Marvel Superhero Island was again used, but there was no scare zone, just a house located in the Carnage Warehouse. Interestingly enough, this house, Disorientorium, did make some Marvel references. It was, of course, the age of Bill and Ted, so Universal was no stranger to pushing licensing laws. It seems even Marvel's threats didn't put them completely off, dabbling in the risky business of featuring Marvel at Halloween Horror Nights. Disorientorium was a 3D haunted house and was themed to a roadside attraction that drove tourists mad. In the queue, there were actually several ads for the Daily Bugle and a wanted sign of Electro. This small amount of theming might not be much, but it does make it possible to suggest that the Disorientorium took place within the Marvel Universe. But yes, this is of course a bit of a stretch. In 2005, Halloween Horror Nights occurred again exclusively in Islands of Adventure. Marvel Superhero Island was home to Blood Thunder Alley and the Carnage Warehouse housed Demon Cantina. There were no references to the Marvel Universe in either of these and this was the last year Halloween Horror Nights was held at Islands of Adventure. With Disney's acquisition of Marvel in 2009, it seems highly unlikely that we will ever see anything Marvel at Halloween Horror Nights again. If Universal, or even another company, could utilise Marvel within a haunt event, what would you most like to see? We never know. With the recent release of Werewolf by Night, who knows what we'll see. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, check out my shorts channel and my other videos.